The Ford F-150 is one of America's most iconic and best-selling vehicles. Really, actually not just in America, but actually around the world. This truck behind me is a 2017 Platinum Edition. It's got four-wheel drive, FX4 package. It's got the big panoramic moonroof. It's got pretty much every option you can get on an F-150 Platinum. It's got the 3.5 EcoBoost with the 10R80 10-speed transmission. Now this is actually the second F-150 I've owned. I used to own a 2015 F-150 that had the 5 liter V8 and the 6-speed transmission. So in reading some of the comments and feedback from my F-150 review and then also my video on the EcoBoost versus the 5.0, which I'll link above here in the card, I realized that I really should do a video on what are the top things I like about the F-150 and what are the top things I don't like about the F-150. So what I'm going to do today is give you the eight things that I love the most about this truck. So let's just go ahead and jump right into this. So the number one thing I love about this truck in particular is the EcoBoost engine. And really the thing I like about the most is the torque that it produces at low RPM. Now, if you want a comprehensive overview of this, you should go check out my video, which I'll link here about the EcoBoost versus the 5.0. But the thing with the EcoBoost motors is that they're twin turbo. And what they're designed to do is generate a huge amount of torque at a low RPM. So for everyday driving around town, or also for pulling trailers and heavy loads, up mountains and things like that. The engine has a ton of power without having to rev the crap out of it. This is really a huge advantage for a truck. I mean, if you think of vehicles that are built to tow and haul like semi-trucks, what do they have? Well, they use a gigantic turbocharged diesel engine to give the maximum amount of torque at an extremely low RPM. So I do understand Ford's move with the EcoBoost of trying to make more torque at a low RPM. And actually, I think that's what the EcoBoost is about. It's never been about fuel economy. It's always been about the torque and how it drives and how it hauls weight. And in that respect, this truck delivers. Compared to my 5.0 V8 that I had before, I mean, I would have to rev that engine way out to, you know, four or 5,000 RPM to feel any sort of power or torque. Now, it was a rewarding experience. It sounded good and the truck performed great. Um, but when you're towing a heavy trailer for long distances, you know, running the engine at high RPMs gets a little tiring after a while. And so having that low RPM torque from the boost on the turbos is a really great thing. Okay, so the number two thing that I love about the F-150, especially the ones from 2017 and later, is the 10-speed transmission. Now, I need to explain this. The 10-speed is kind of have a love and hate relationship for me. So I love the fact that you get 10 ratios for um, traveling through steep terrain, towing trailers. It always seems to have the right gear to put you in the meat of the power and the torque. I'm going to talk more about what I don't like about the 10 speed in terms of kind of the shift quality, um, how it kind of stumbles on shifts, especially at lower speeds. I'll talk about that in my video coming up next week, which is the, which is the things I don't like about the F-150. So you have to stay tuned for that. But I do like the ratios that the 10 speed has. As someone who came from the six speed truck, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that for the type of things that people do with the F-150, towing boats, towing campers, uh, going through the mountains and things like that, having those extra four ratios is a huge, huge advantage. I just wish they would make the shifting quality better and the shift logic better. Now, that may have been improved on the later models. This is the first year for the 10 speed and it was probably a mistake for me to buy a first year vehicle with that new transmission because they're usually sorting it out in the first year. So that's on me. Uh, a lot of people with the newer ones have said they're quite a bit better. So take it with a grain of salt and go test drive it for yourself. Okay, the third thing that I love about this truck my truck has the 36 gallon extended range fuel tank. Now, in my opinion, this should be standard on trucks and not an option. And the reason is that when you're, again, I always go back to towing, but even if you're not towing, just having that extra fuel range, it allows you to be more strategic about where you wanna stop for gas. So I can drive a much further distance between fuel stops and I can go to places like Costco or other places where it's more affordable to fill up um, than having to go to some station that I really don't want to deal with. 
So it saves time, it saves money, and when you're towing trailers and you're getting around 10 miles a gallon, having that 36 gallons gives you over 300 miles of driving range, where if you had the 23 gallon tank, which is the standard one, uh, you're stopping for gas all the time and it gets pretty old. Now again, this is an option that my truck has. I see a lot of the F-150s. I've been looking at a lot of the window stickers, not only on the this generation of truck, but on the new 21s, and quite a bit of them have that 36 gallon tank. But if you're shopping for an F-150, make sure to get that option. It doesn't cost very much. Um, if you're gonna be towing at all, or even if you're not, um, just check that option box. Make sure your truck has it. It's just, there's absolutely no downside to having it. Okay, number four for me has got to be the adaptive cruise control with stop and go. Now, some people are saying, well, you know, a truck, why do you need to have all this fancy stuff in your truck? But the truth is, whether you like it or not, trucks have become family transportation for so many people in America. People use them to go out to dinner, they use them to tow their boat, they use them to go uh, to the mall, they use them to do some off-roading. Um, everything you can think of, road trips, uh, you can put your whole family in the cab, and the cab is one of the things we're going to get to in this video. But having the adaptive cruise allows you to, especially in congested areas, set your cruise control to say 65 miles an hour and it has radar sensors that sense the traffic ahead and it keeps you at a certain distance that you can adjust from the vehicle in front of you. It'll even drive itself through traffic jams for the most part. Um, sometimes the systems, when they come to a complete stop, you have to like press a button or press something to get them going again. But it's, it's a really nice thing to have. I admit that I'm spoiled by this feature. Uh, I was introduced to it a few years ago. I forget what vehicle I first had it with. But now we have it in my wife's Mazda CX-5 and I have it in this truck. And as I'm shopping for a new truck uh, for, for tax purposes for my channel this year, uh, it's something that I'm not willing to compromise on. So I will always have adaptive crews in my vehicles. It's just, uh, it's, once you get used to it, you're not gonna go back. Now I should mention that the adaptive cruise uh, in this generation of truck was pretty hard to find. And it's one of the reasons that I actually ended up having to get a platinum, which I didn't really want because I don't like the platinum styling and the badges. But it was, I couldn't find a Lariat that had that option anywhere near me. I used a pre-owned one, so I ended up with the Platinum. But anyway, long story short, um, it's actually kind of hard to find. I like what Ford has done with the, for 2021, where they're putting it on more trucks. I noticed you can order it on XLTs, and some of the videos I've seen on the 21 trucks, the XLTs, they're coming with that adaptive cruise option. I think that's a great move. Um, if you look at companies like Toyota and, and other companies, they're making it standard even on their cheapest base level cars cars. Uh, it, it's the wave of the future. It's an active safety feature and I'm a big believer. So uh, take it with a grain of salt whether you like it or not, but I love it. Okay, number five for me is how well this truck tows. Now, like I mentioned, uh, this is my second F-150. I've had other full-size trucks. I've had actually a Toyota Tundra and I've had a GMC Sierra. I've also had mid-size trucks uh, with a Chevy Colorado. So I do have quite a bit of experience towing different trailers with different sizes of trucks. And um, far and away, short of going to a heavy-duty 2500 or 3500 series truck, uh, with a diesel engine, this is going to be your best towing half-ton truck. And I say that from personal experience. Uh, the 3.5 EcoBoost has, like I mentioned in my first point, has so much low-end torque and so much power that it doesn't hardly feel the weight of the trailer behind you. So if you're towing a big box in the wind, which is what most campers are, uh, you're really going to appreciate having that EcoBoost engine and a 10-speed transmission. Uh, combine that with the 36-gallon fuel tank, which I talked about, and uh, you're just not going to be able to find a better half-ton truck for towing than this. And again, in my personal opinion, other half-ton trucks tow really well. Uh, the GMs, they've got the 6.2 V8, which is a very strong engine. Even the Hemi 5.7 and the Ram product is, is a very strong powertrain. Uh, but I have driven all of them back to back, and they don't hold a candle, quite honestly, to the EcoBoost. So if towing is important to you, I highly suggest you take these for a test drive uh, directly compared to the other trucks and make a decision for yourself. Okay, so number six for me is definitely the technology that they're putting into the truck bed. Now, granted, this is not unique to Ford. Ram has, is coming to the table with their Ram boxes. Um, GM has the multi-pro tailgate, which is an awesome thing. 
I mean, everyone has kind of taken their own approach. Um, and so I like, I like all of them, but on the Ford, what I like is a few things. I do like the um, LED lights, which probably can't see it in this video, but I'll put a picture of it here or a video of it. But I also do appreciate the bed, the step here that they give you. Now, I've kind of poo-pooed this in the past and said it's kind of annoying. Uh, but the more, I, the more time I spent with these Fords, the more I do like it. It really does allow you um, an easy way to step up into your bed. Uh, this has kind of, you know, been shown to death on YouTube, so I'm not going to go into it. You know, you've got the pole, which people make jokes about using it as a, a stripper pole and everything, which um, I've been known to do from time to time. But uh, really, uh, I do like what they do with the truck beds now. Um, but again, all the manufacturers are doing that, so I'm not sure that really sets the Ford apart. Uh, in terms of the features on the bed, um, I think GM honestly kind of leads that with, they have a wider bed. Uh, they give you more, more a cargo capacity in the bed. Their short bed is also an inch or two longer than the Ford and the Ram. And I like the integrated step in the bumper of the GM. So as much as I appreciate what the Ford does, and for 2021, I know they've improved it even further, I do kind of have to give my hat off to GM for what they're doing with their trucks. Number seven on my list of things I love about the F-150 is the interior capacity, the interior room, the comfort, and just the practicality of the inside. So again, I admit that pretty much all full-size trucks now, they've really upped their game in terms of the cab because they know that the buyers of the trucks are using them to haul their family, their kids, their dogs, and things like that. So they've really upped the interior space and usability of these trucks. Um, as a road trip vehicle, being able to have, you know, one or two car seats in the back here and have limo-like leg room, You've got, you know, on this truck, of course, you got the moon roof, which is, which is a nice thing. Um, but just all the, the storage in the interior, uh, the, the comfort features that it has, how much room there is to spread out. You can fit cargo under, under the seats. It's just, um, it's such an easy truck to live with day to day, um, but also for road trips or taking vacations with. So um, good job Ford, but honestly, good job all manufacturers on, on how you're doing with your interior space. This is a definite advantage over the mid-sized trucks. Uh, I, I have owned mid-sized trucks. I do like mid-sized trucks for, they have a different set of strengths. They're easier to park. They're more fuel efficient. They're uh, better handling. Um, they're, you know, just a, a little bit more practical sometimes on the everyday front. Uh, but I do have to give my hats off to the full-size trucks for providing so much interior room and comfort. Number eight on my list is kind of an extension of number seven, but it has to do with the comfort of the seats themselves. So I mentioned how roomy and comfortable the interior is overall, which is true. Uh, but the Ford seats are really in another league. Now, what I mean is that the level of adjustment and support that they provide is pretty incredible. So it is true that this, this truck in particular, being the Platinum, does have the, I think they call it multi-contour seats. It gives you the massaging feature, uh, see, it won't let me turn it on. I actually want, I wish I could get a massage now. I'm shooting this video. Um, the massage is, is a little gimmicky. I will admit that. It just kind of inflates air bladders. But anyway, the, the, the best thing about the multi-contour seats is that they you can really get a ton of lumbar support. It has different parts of your back where you can adjust the lumbar support. You can also adjust the bottom cushion quite a bit. Um, and it just allows you to get, for long drives, th these seats are really, really good. Some of the best of any vehicle that I've had. Now, I'll also say that on my last Ford truck, even though it was an XLT with the cloth seats, it still had really good adjustments and really good comfort and support for long drive. So I think no matter what trim level you get, I think you're gonna be happy with the seats. Now, for 2021, I haven't tested those seats yet. So when I get around to that, I'll let you know, but keep that in mind. I'm talking about the F-150 between 2015 and 2020. So wrapping this up, you know, I really have been happy with my F-150 ownership experience on, on both the trucks that I've had. Uh, in particular, this truck is kind of like my limousine. It's, it's really uh, great for so many purposes and there's so many good attributes that this thing has. Now we can have thousands of comments about people, which we do, questioning the reliability of the EcoBoost and the turbos and talking other things about the Ford. And in fact, next week, I'm gonna have a video of the seven or eight things that I don't like about the this F-150 and the F-150 in general. Uh, we're gonna talk about things about like the aluminum body, which actually is become a downside for me uh, and we'll get into that. Um, we'll talk about a bunch of other stuff, um, the engine heat issues that I have with the turbo. So, so it's not all puppies and rainbows here. 
there are going to be some downsides that we have to talk about. So in order to keep this video from being too long, I had to limit it to eight things. But, you know, there's so many other things I like about this truck. I mean, it's got memory seating. It's got... Um, it's got the four-wheel drive automatic setting, which I really, really like. It's got a rear locker that you can select on your own and lock it in instead of the GM trucks with the Eaton G80, which, which engages on its own, but only after you spin. Uh, I like the console shifter. I like, um, you know, the 360 cameras. I, I, there, there's so many things I, I really do like about it. Uh, but that's not to say that it doesn't have its flaws. And as I just mentioned, we're going to have a video on the things I don't like. Here's the truth about you know vehicles. I've owned a lot of trucks and cars, and there's always going to be uh, for no matter what vehicle you have, um, it, there's always going to be things that you like about it and things you don't like about it. And as automotive journalists have to look at it, and you know we're we're trying to be objective about what we like and we don't like. The fact that I'm reviewing a truck that I own, I think, makes my review a little bit more uh, sincere, a little bit more accurate than some of the car reviewers out there. But of course, you know, people who review cars for a living, they don't have that option. They can't own every vehicle. They have to go test them. But anyway, I'm going on far too much. But uh, please subscribe because we're going to have uh, some more F-150 content. Uh, in particular, we're going to have a video about the trim levels and would I get platinum again. Um, short answer to that is no. And also the things I don't like about the F-150. So stay tuned. Thanks for your support. And we'll see you next time.